Welcome everyone to Behavior Code Podcast. This is the regularly scheduled Tuesday at 5 p.m., although we're a little late, but it's Tuesday at 5 p.m. versus the other days that are, you know, special broadcasts that, you know, couldn't get scheduled in otherwise. And we have with us today, Tony Kazmiski. I'm, of course, your host, Yogi Chris, PhD, founder of Ninth Limb Yoga. And we're interviewing or really having conversations with people that have taken elite level training with Arash Bazaar. And Tony Kazmiski, I believe you've taken like three boot camps of the Love Spell series, the Last Lion's Den series, and you've done this online remotely and, you know, live in person is coming up soon. And, you know, first, uh, I guess before we kind of get into it, um, maybe we could just do a little, you know, check in, a little introduction. What would you want the world to know about you just kind of as like, uh, here I am, Tony Kazmiski? Yeah, um, honestly... I'm really nervous right now, but I'm, I'm taking that nervous feeling and I'm putting it aside because I feel that what I have to share um, can make a difference in someone's life. Definitely. Um, I, I've been following a rush for like eight years now. Um, a friend of mine, Sam, actually interviewed him and showed me some YouTube videos. I'm like, you know, I'm, who is this guy? I don't get it. I don't like it. It's like, this can't be real. Fast forward seven years later, I'm somehow following him on Instagram and he was doing a Sunday service. And one thing he mentioned was that I've been spending my money on dumber shit, which is true. And somehow I got connected with uh, Yogi Chris and he just followed up with me and followed up with me. And finally I'm like, I, I need this. Like I, I reached a point in my life where it's like, I'm no better than I was eight years ago. And I can just see myself getting worse. So I, there's something in me that I know that I can give and make a difference. And mm -hmm. here I am, my, my full authentic self. Yeah. Has that changed? That's really powerful. Has that, you know, so seven years, then I'm following up with you. Then you realize that, you know, you're worse off than you were eight years ago and something's got to change. Like what uh, has that change taken place? That was maybe about, uh, how long ago was that? I, I want to say a year, like I, I'm really bad at keeping track of time. I remember um, Tampa. I think it was, I think it was January that I was really pressing on you. It was like, January, yeah. Was <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this, like this, I, and I'm, I'm getting used to the uncomfortable feeling. I'm like, this is something that I need. I know I need to do. Cause I was like, when I, when I feel that um, discomfort and like hesitation, I'm like, okay, I know I need to do this. And it was actually funny because every boot camp is on the weekend and I was working the weekend shift at the Walmart distribution center on my fifth month. And I was just mentally and physically drained. And I was like, th there was just something that was just like, this is it. Like I'm, I'm going to give up this comfortable living income and invest it in something that I know is going to make me live my life and probably live longer for a lifetime. For sure. So yeah, it, it was a good investment and it, it wasn't easy, but so thank you. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, yeah, so that was about six months ago. And uh, so what, you know, so yeah, give us, give us an idea. What kind of shifts or transformations have you noticed or other people noticed in you in the last six um, months? Well, basically it's like for, for the longest time, I've been like a behind the scenes guy. It's like, I, I've always been afraid mm -hmm to like make, take action, make moves, live, live my life, like move to Florida. Like I'm, I'm in Wisconsin. I moved down to Florida back in 2015 and it took me like 10 years to finally do it. I, I followed my friend. He went to full sale, uh, full sale university. I'm going to slow down for uh, entertainment business. So I was kind of like working with him. Like I, I consider myself a number two. So it's like in, in your case, Chris it's like, you're, you're speaking, you're leading, you're the host. And I'm like behind the scenes doing everything, making sure it happens. I'm like, don't look at me. Don't, don't pay attention to me. And then, um, and then you're like, are you going to sign up for the boot camp? Arash is asking about you. I'm like, what, what does Arash want with me? I'm like, oh, what is he asking them about me for? And that's just my negativity, self doubt talking. It's like, all right, I'm, I'm going to step up here. And then he called on me like a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, oh shit. All right, here you go. This is it. And I've noticed that when I just freely speak and fully express myself and be authentic, it, 
it, can, it resonates with people and it, they, some people relate to it. They can help them. And when I see like the difference I make in others, because for decades, I've just been afraid to speak up and share myself because people are like, oh, you can't do that. And what you, you like dating other girls? What are you gay? And it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm gay. If wanting, not wanting to get married and have kids and work a job that I don't even like and get wasted on the weekends makes me gay, then yeah, yeah, I'm gay. <laughs> so I was just like, and, and that's like the mentality around here. Like, I'm not going to mention there. any names. Around, around Wisconsin oh, or Florida? Where I, am, where I am right now, you know, Wisconsin, like, I'm not going to mention any names sure. of people unless it's good. But it's like my so-called best friends and family members, like, uh-huh. asking me about my life and judging me. And, and it's like, they, like, do you, do you really care? Or do you just want me to be just as miserable as you are? Like, my, my best friend, I love him, but he, I know he's not happy. I mean, his, some of the stuff that he says his wife says, like, she, she's a bitch. And then he's got two kids with her, and he's working this job just to support the family. I'm like, and some of my other friends, like, they have kids, and they want to move. They want to travel, but they can't. Yeah. So this they year. They really want to escape their mind. They don't even want to travel. Most people who say they want to travel, they don't want to travel. They just want to get away from their mind. Yeah. And they, and they come back from vacation worse off because they were stuck to their mind so much while they were away. Exactly. No matter where you go, there you are. And that's what happened to me when I moved to Florida. Like I was so miserable down there because I was just focused on like my school, work, career. And yeah. life, life served me a huge slice of humble pie. And I moved back up here last winter, actually. And if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have been following you and Arash as closely as I was. So it actually happened for a good reason. And yeah, always. Yeah. And now I just feel like I'm on the right path. I'm like, I'm with the right brothers. Like you guys, I like the way like you and then Shane Smith was like talking to each other, calling each other brothers. I'm like, man, I even have this connection with my two younger brothers. So wow. Like, who, who am I being as a brother, a son, a friend, a family member? Mm. It's like, I feel like I have a closer connection with you guys on here who I haven't even met yet. Hopefully wow, that's time. powerful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And actually one, one um, night I was actually in a deep meditative state taking a bath. And during your podcast, I just felt such a connection with you where I was like, I, I want what he has. I know I have it in me and I want to do for others what you're doing for me. So that's why I keep showing up. Mm. And now is that intrinsic to Tony? Is that a Tony quality or where does that come from? It's a quality I didn't even know I had, you know, it's, it's like, I didn't even know I had this feeling in me. Well, how did you, like, was it, did it get awakened when you saw that podcast episode or when did you first know that you well, had actually, actually, this happened to me when I, I went to a landmark introduction. Landmark is another thing that I went to. It's like personal and professional development. Um, I, former business partner, friend, mentor, introduced me to it and this introduction leader was leading and it was like third fourth time I went and he had me stand up and share in the room what my life would be like if it was organized and not just what what I was doing but mainly in my head and I I got to feel what it was like to be organized (laughs) and and he saw the like the change in me and I was like this guy like he, he has a gift or he has something in him that I may have perhaps have in me and I want to do for others what I did for him. So it just kind of opened up this whole new world. And I, I remember I went to the forum. I went to Chicago and I've been to Chicago many times. And after the forum, I felt reborn, transformed. Like I haven't felt that good sober ever. I had dinner with um, a woman around my age who was actually going to be a doctor and dropped out because she wanted to be like a, a self-help coach. And now she's actually on the staff there, but just being able to sit down with a woman who I may have felt attraction for and being able to freely express myself and like, Hey, I'm, I'm thinking about maybe open relationship or polyamory is something I'm tapping into. And she, instead of being like, Oh no, you can't do that. She was like, Oh yes. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Well, that's not me, but I actually have some people that I can introduce you to. <laughs> She's pimping you out there. And yeah, yeah. And ended up, get this, went to a meetup the Sunday night that was right across the street from my friend's house where I was staying. And you know how big Chicago is. I was like, yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> it was just like, you can't make this stuff up. 
so that like that helped me understand like more of you and AZD's work and it's just like How so? not, only, not only is this stuff like real it's like I, it's possible and do you mean the interaction with that woman helped you understand it more or yeah or yeah just understand that I can that I it's, it's okay to date mm -hmm. multiple women mm -hmm. or be in an open relationship and and being able to share it without feeling like hesitant or like you're going to be judged and also enable other people to freely share themselves where it's like hey if you want to settle down and get kids that's great you know I, let me introduce you to some people who are into that yeah it has a lot to do you know the ability to accept other people will translate in your comfort in how you communicate about yourself because people aren't really responding to what you're saying they're responding to how you're saying it mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so that's you know you can talk about anything if you know how to say it and uh you know people i think get the uh, mistake because i don't really get a lot of shit about it uh anymore and yet i still get people that think that i don't accept them the thing is is i do accept them i just don't accept their communication i let it be known it's, their, it's how they're saying what they're saying it's not what they're saying i don't care what they do with themselves as long as they're not hurting children or other adults against their will, you know? Um, so that's really interesting. You said a lot. And um, one thing that's always, that's been, you know, early on in my uh, journey of pickup, which I don't really do pickup like that anymore. It's interesting. I, I don't, I don't know if I will. I think I will. I want to, I want to do like hardcore pickup. Like I want to just like, just binge on pickup for like 12 months but now is not those 12 months now is a different 12 months next 12 months and it's not that i'm putting it off it's just that's the strategy get my business in line because i don't want to be one of those broke pickup artists that like you know whatever that's going to end up being the limitation like azd was just talking about this guy that was a uh, at the last boot camp he was talking about no no is that a martial arts class he was teaching and he was talking about this um i think a muay thai fighter that was so dominant globally like number one in the world and he said fucked him up just like one easy kick took his legs out like and he's like five years later the guy was selling real estate five years later the guy was fat five years later the, it was just like eventually the guy was no longer that beast that was the world champion muay thai fighter and uh you know because he couldn't support himself with muay thai so he had to get a regular job job and you know so do i, I don't want to be that guy that gets the you know the pickup artist and then but i don't have anything established for myself um so that's what I'm doing these next 12 months. And then it's going to be hardcore pickup. Mm -hmm. So uh, what was I saying? Oh, this one early in pickup when I was a little bit more, cause I was a university student. So I was around a lot of uh, younger women and it was a pretty flexible scene, you know, the college town. So it was easier to do like pickup, but I was doing a lot of Vince Kelvin kind of pickup. And when I was in LA this one time, I met this girl and we still talk sometimes, but I outgrew her, but she was big into landmark. And uh, it was because she, you know, she was too smart for her own good. You know what I'm saying? She's really intelligent. She's this Jewish girl, like hella smart and, but hella confused. So you could be so smart with the wrong ideas. You could be so, so smart at the wrong mathematics. And then you just spin in your wheels all your life trying to solve a problem with trying to do base 11 system with a base 10 system. You just never get the right answer. And, uh, but it sounded like landmark was pretty power. You know, I don't want to, you know, it sounded like she had improved. But now I'm curious because I was never, ever going to do it, even though she tried to like sell me out or whatever. But you, I want to get your take. Uh, how does the, I, and I, this might be an ignorant question, not knowing how to ask it really, but how does the landmark method compare in your eyes with the IMC method? What, how would you compare and contrast? I, I'd say, um, well, to each their own, of course, like the, I, I did the forum, um, ILP actually, before the advanced course, you're supposed to do advanced course in ILP, but I pretty much, apparently I begged someone to do ILP. I remember doing that. Um, but it's, it's designed, ILP, the leadership program is designed to make you quit. Like the reason why I signed up for that is because I'm in a leadership role in my shop. I'm an electrician in the Air Force. And I just don't really feel myself as a leader. People don't like recognize me as a leader. So that's one reason why I took it as well as helping my friend run his business. Um, but the thing that I noticed, like they, they want, they, they wanted me to like sign people up, refer them, you know, market for them. Um, don't make any money out of it. But the thing is, it's like what Landmark did for me, you can't put a price on. So it's like you, 
you watch a really good movie or you eat like amazing sushi at a restaurant, why don't you, why don't you tell someone about that? So whenever I would assist in Chicago, sometimes I would hear conversations of like the higher up people judging others on their relationship choices. And I, I didn't really care for that. Um, so when I was introduced to AZD IMC, I'm like, okay, finally, th this is just like, it, I, I was actually comparing some things to Landmark. There are some quotes that Arash would say that I would hear in Landmark. I'm like, wow, they kind of like correspond with each other. But AZD, he just like really dig, like digs first. down. What's that? Uh, it froze for a second for me. Oh. Um, I, what I was saying is sometimes AZD would say things that I would hear in Landmark. So they would kind of correspond with each other. But AZD, he just like digs down so deep to a point where it's like, because there, there's times where I would, I would feel certain things in Landmark. Like the first time I, I shared myself with someone and they told me like, oh, there's no right or wrong answer. I'm like, holy, holy shit, that's amazing. Because for the longest time, like, I was never good at school. I thought I was dumb. And here I just openly share my stuff like, oh yeah, so okay. And then like they repeat it back to me in an understanding way. But when I took some of AZD's courses, like the first time, I think it was Monks with Attitude and I just learned some things in there where it just made me feel like I was going through some depression, taking Citalopram just because I was pushing myself hard where my coach recommended that I would do that. But when AZD would, would share things with me that would like, I never, heard or could even really understand but I remember the way it made me feel I was just like you who needs therapy who needs prescription drugs when you when you have this stuff that you can learn I mean I personally I think this stuff can prevent cancer it can prevent a person from committing suicide it, this is just next level stuff yeah yeah it's and, all communication you know the cancer is part of the body falls out of communication with the you know the self and you know the um, you know, suicide person falls out of communication with society. The person is depressed, lonely, not understood is bad communication. And, but don't tell that to them when they're on the ledge. <laughs> hey, you need to improve your communication is all that needs to happen. It's your tonality. <laughs> it's not how you're, it's not what you're saying, guy. It's just how you're saying it. <laughs> so, uh, well, that's really um, interesting. So it sounds like it was kind of a uh, stepping stone um, that woke you up to, you know, maybe loosened up your mind. And then when you say that AZD uh, goes so deep, um, give us your take on this because you're, you know, sometimes I forget what it was like early on. Yeah, well, like, like I said before, it's like I, I, I didn't like him. Like I, I didn't get it. It was just like, but it's because it was so like far out there, complex to my comprehension. And it also showed something in me where it's like, what, what am I doing with my life? It's like, I, I could be so much further than where I am now. And if some people are like, Oh, you're, you're quite successful. It's like, yeah, maybe compared to you, but I know if I would apply myself, I'd be so far out there. Um, I just, just forgot what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> hey, it's all right. Well, where, where would, what is the future hold? Like, where do you see yourself, you know, this, what what kind of transformations are you looking to make let's say in the next two two or three years um basically like well what really hit me was during this whole pandemic um and i was following arash and i was basically stuck in my grandma's house that i was watching i was helping my family sell it yeah and um she's in a home right now it was nice to have the house all to myself but yeah, I, I was like, I was afraid to go out. I was just sitting inside watching AZD webinars. I think I would remember that. Yeah, yeah. And um, he mentioned Out of Shadows. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch this. And I so watched it one night. Out of the Shadows. That, that documentary, yeah. And it made me sick. Yeah. I, I was sick for a day. Man. And then That's I like was, an introduction. That's like an introduction to the human trafficking rings. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I was like, if this, and people are saying it's not real, but it's like, our, our rush wouldn't be making it up. The, these guys, these men, these powerful men, successful men here that are following him wouldn't be making it up. 
and I'm intelligent. Intelligent, man. I'm yeah, I'm getting chills right now. And the next day I got up and I'm like, I gotta do something about this. I can't just sit here. So I started going for walks um, down by the lake, getting in touch with nature, just listening and thinking about positive things. And it's like, now I'm, I'm working on my communication skills because there's people who I respect in Landmark that don't share the same views as me. And some told me to F off, stop talking to me, would write me things on my wall or Facebook Messenger, correcting me, showing me these facts that they found. Yeah, they and didn't I'm have like, like a family. It wasn't like that family cohesion. There was like that respect on a family level. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or what a family should be. Because I mean, we all had fucked up families. So maybe they think family level is, let's make each other wrong. I love you. Yeah, yeah, it's like <laughs> that. So, and then, and then he was doing messengers. I remember you were like, hey, are you interested? Yeah, and you sent me a $25,000 uh, payment request. I'm like, wow, like I, I wish I could do <laughs> Did this. I really? Well, yeah, you did. It, it was hilarious. Like you want like $25,000. Like, well, could I pay like $97 a month for the rest of my life? But um, I, I saw the value and, and we were kind of going back and forth. I'm like, you know, if you like let me make payments on this, I'll be able to like work smart and be able to afford and, and pay you tenfold. But um, I just, I see the value and I, I want to be like a messenger of men. Like I want to, improve my communication skills in a way where it's like if I'm working with someone like even in my shop we don't share the same political views or beliefs it's like at the end of the day we're here for the same reason right world peace yeah what would it what would, yeah let, let's go into that well if you you improve your communication skills get communication to a level like what would be different at that level That's yeah basically different. where I can like move touch and inspire people where it's like they they want to get on jump ship get on board with me and be like yeah let's go like i during my aisle what's that like let's go where well well for example um I'm, I'm i may be going to one of three places early september i can't say right now but um it's a secret it, it may be yeah it may be unsafe and i know when i went to afghanistan back in 2012 like i thought i was going to war and, but deep down, I knew I was going to peace because I, I provided a comfortable living situation for the locals there. Like 5,000 would come on base and work, you know, some of it was shit jobs, but still. And it's like multi, I think billion dollar runway, one of the busiest runways in the world. So much money, but it's like, hey, you can't pay us back. You mind if we drill over there? And guess what? We'll share it with you. Well, I, I have PTSD from working with some very sad, emotional men, like these grown ass men, call themselves grown ass men, who just make <laughs> things difficult, make things hard. And it's like, I, I'm learning things about- This is in the military? Um, in the military, yeah. Energy, um, like, mm -hmm. like one of them lied, actually two of them lied about stuff that happened over there. I, I had to block one because I was trying to help him. And when you, and, and now I understand, like, I, I really appreciate you and Arash's and everyone else's patience. Like when you tell someone to do something and they don't do it, you just have to send them love and be like, all right, just figure it out or let me know when you're ready. Yeah, well, it's definitely, it's a different in a free market or a voluntary system uh, versus, you know, uh, you know, there's, well, I guess in, in, in a way, the military is voluntary also. Once you get in, though, I mean, there's pretty strict punishment. I mean, it is voluntary. You choose to be there unless you drive. Yeah, I, I say I'm getting paid to volunteer. But yeah. I, I learned a job. I learned a trade. And one of my – I actually made a business plan when I was at Full Sail is I want to make a team and go to, like, a third world country, film it, film a documentary, say Africa, and actually maybe save some children while we're at it. Um, show them how to clean water, build a water filtration system for them, leave it there. Like you can still practice your religion, your culture here. Here's some clean water. You have to walk seven miles in one direction to go there. You, you're going to have sex, you know, put this rubber on your dick because apparently AIDS is spreading there. And I want to be able to like earn so much money where it's like, I can just call a few guys, girls and be like, Hey, we're going here for a month. You want to come with me? I'm going to take care of you. I get to choose who I work with. Yeah. So that, yeah, that's what I see. Mm -hmm. 
That's nice. A life of abundance in that thing. An interesting thing I just heard about HIV is that HIV doesn't kill people, they say. And they say AIDS doesn't kill people. What it is is a compromised immune system kills people. And th the guy was saying something like 75% of Zambia or something has AIDS, uh, but they're not dying because it's like having COVID. You know how, people, how many people have the antibodies for COVID and they, they test positive for it, but they're not dying. It's a compromised immune system that people die from. And blah, blah, blah. I mean, I don't know too much about the science of it, but it was like, whoa, dude, that's, that's quite a radical uh, perspective. Uh, but the clean water and everything, I wonder what kind of cultural innovations would come from people that they save the time of walking 14 miles a day and carrying water and that energy. And they'd, they'd be able to distribute some of the ancient wisdom of their culture to the world because they'd have more free time on their hands. So that's rad. And I know a lot of people would be on board with it. That's pretty cool that you said it here on Behavior Code Podcast because anybody listening to this, the thousands of viewers that are going to see it in coming years, I'm sure there's going to be some people resonating with you. And for the time being, your Instagram handle is Kickstart Cash, one word. Yeah, Kickstart Cash. The cash starts with a K. Oh, Kickstart Cash with a K. Oh, that's why it didn't tag you in this thing. Oh, all right. I spelled it wrong on this thing. I, I spelled it with a C. Um, okay. And then, wow. So <clears throat> I think most people that are going to come to this are already involved in IMC Nation that they've already heard of Arash. There might be some new discovery because there's some really powerful words, you know, talking about like hashtagging or whatever. Some powerful words, to, you know, an electrician in the military, uh, landmark. Um, you know, if I, if I would end it on one thing, it was this thing you were talking about, uh, you kind of brought it up in a few different angles, was uh, authentic communication, resonating with authentic communication. And in particular, I think it was, around talking with women or and or just expressing your beliefs around maybe political beliefs also but female beliefs you know uh, or beliefs around the female which i guess azd is teaching political beliefs also it's kind of like political science almost but uh what what could you say about um what's that like like did you know that you were not communicating authentically or did you or or like when did you become aware like what are some of the milestones that you've achieved in this idea of like communicating authentically. I mean, this is a trendy phrase, right? Yeah, yeah, not, not at first. Um, I, since I was like a kid, you know, um, going to parochial school, you know, parents divorced a few times. I just, going, going well, they through- They got together again and divorced or they remarried? Well, my, my, actually, my, my parents got divorced before I was even born. And then my mom, like I love her to death, but she picked low value guys because she got divorced two other times. So I had to experience that. And there was a point where I just felt like I didn't deserve what I wanted. So I had a hard time communicating, expressing myself, reading social cues. Like I couldn't tell if someone liked me or not. And then if like a girl was smiling at me, I thought she was actually making fun of me. So, you know, when, when the book, The Game came out, I was secretly reading it. I was actually deployed in Guantanamo Bay, read it, applied it, and met a army chick there. <laughs> and it was like, the guy to girl ratio is 80 to one. So I felt like I won the lottery. I'm like, holy shit, this stuff really works. But I never knew how to really keep the girl. Um, and then fast forward, like five years later, before my Afghanistan deployment, I run into my friend, Anthony, who's actually a coach for the natural lifestyle with uh, James Marshall. And he, he's done with that. Now he, he came back home, but he, he, he showed things with me. Like I, I was so stressed from my Afghanistan deployment had a hard time making eye contact so he he showed me and teach me some things with that and now it's just like when I was in Florida I would go out I would actually do well like I would meet some women what I would consider models but I would get their number like one I remember meeting one night where I was so like oh my god I can't believe this is happening where I felt I started hallucinating and I I, remember, I recall all those as like reference experiences and now with this kind of work that I'm doing with you in a rush, I feel like I'm, I'm working on my inner game. So mm -hmm. then when I'm, I meet those kind of women, I can not yeah. only fully express myself, but allow them to fully express themselves. Yeah. We're like connecting and I'm not yeah. like so infatuated with like her looks. It's more like on the inside. Yeah. You won't even know how good you are until that woman comes. It goes invisible. You don't even know how much you've changed until things open up or you start interacting with, uh, you know, somehow the interactions happen, you'll see how much you've changed. And, uh, wow. So that's really exciting. Yeah. That was such a powerful, 
uh, story there. I, and it, I didn't mean to cut it off, actually. I think there's more to it. No, and, and actually, I'm right where you are. Like, I'm my deployment, I'm going to be away seven months. You know, I'm just going to focus on... Oh, that's about to happen? Fitness, yeah, September I'm going. That's why it's like I really want to make Arash's live one in August, whenever it is. I got yeah. a lot going on next month. But um, I just want to focus on, like, the business earning... Like to me, a comfortable income is like 10 grand a month for, for me, my lifestyle and also to support my family at home. My dad's going through chemo. Like it's a very humbling situation I'm in. I'm, I'm going to be 37 next month. I, I lived with him back when I was 19. Like I, I was living in a sleeping on his couch. I'm like, holy shit. I'm back to where I was when I was 19. But I'm like, the, the reason why I share that and why I'm here is because I meet some people who are like, I'm living with my parents and they're, they're in their twenties. I'm like, I love you. God bless you. You know, do what you have to do now to like invest in yourself, your brand, your business. So you can live the lifestyle that you want later. So I, I see myself doing that, you know, just focusing yeah, on, on work, the business, the brand, and then living where I want to live with who I want to live with. And then just going out and having fun, like eight hours of work that I'm passionate in, eight hours of fun, and then eight hours of rest, relaxation, you know, yoga. Yeah, man, you can do it. And you've come this far. And, you know, when you say that, I'll end it on this. Uh, you know, when you say, you know, sometimes like, let's say I ran, I, I took a run, I, I put on my running shoes and I go for a run when I'm 16 years old. And when I'm 36 years old, I go for a run. Just because I'm doing the same thing doesn't mean I'm back where I started. You know what I mean? There's a different, it's a different me that comes to it just because I boiled an egg when I was nine and I boil an egg when I'm 29. Like I'm not back where I started. You know what I mean? It's a whole new game now. Thank you. And uh, because you could be on a totally different couch, but back where you started emotionally. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Big I'm actually building a better relationship with my dad now too. So fuck yeah. 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 That's, man, that's, man, that's worth it. That yeah. is worth it. When, when just like with the beautiful woman in with the family member or with the long lost connection or with whoever, when the universe tests you, that's when you see more and more of the value of the inner work and it goes invisible until the universe tests you and you got to come up in your self-worth so that you feel worthy of the test. Otherwise you'll just write it off. Like I just don't even want to take the test. And, but that's like the poor person saying money is the root of all evil, man. Have you ever made money? to make some money and then tell me it's like the uneducated person saying your PhD is bullshit. Do you have any degree? Like, so I've been there. I used to think cool. that way. I'm so glad I'm out of it. Fuck. Yeah. Tony yeah. Kuzmiski, We'll have you back sometime brother and a uh, safe journey on deployment. And maybe we'll see you at the August boot camp, and, or we'll see you at this one too. And uh, anybody wants to reach out to Tony Kuzmiski, kickstart cash with a K and uh, on Instagram. And subscribe if you're catching this iTunes, Spotify, YouTube. We'll catch you in the next one. Namaste.